Hey, it's Shannon here, and we're back in the valley. Um, I was actually having a watch of one of my other videos, Subtropicals uh, Part 1, which was done straight after winter at the start of spring, and I noticed how much the garden has changed, so I thought we really needed to do an update and show you what was happening and all the lush plants that have been growing. We've had some really good success here uh, through summer. So we'll start off with the old Granny Smith apple. We've got a few apples on there. Um, we had a few more than this, but we actually been eating them. So that's that's been a bit of a success. Not really a subtropical, but uh, this is a Sabara Jabba Takaba. This this done all right, but I I actually stuck it a bit close to the fence, and the sheep poked their head through the fence and had a good chew of that. Um, so it had a really bit of a bit of a haircut. Uh, so we've moved that right out of the way now. But as you can see, the uh, Encore, oh sorry, it's a Mandarin Quat, uh, has probably doubled or tripled in size. It's got a few fruit on there as well. I think there's about half a dozen fruit or so. Um, it looks like it's had a really good year of vegetative growth and only put on a moderate amount of fruit. So that is pretty cool. They've got a good feed though. I do feed everything well in here. Um, keep them well mulched, well watered. This is the chocolate pudding fruit tree or black sapote. Um, it was quite a big looking stick in the last video. And um, all those buds that I was looking at, they all did pop up and sprouted. So it's just it's just in a mass of um, new growth here. And it, and that's going to help protect it through this winter coming because it's the start of March here in New Zealand um, and winter is only around the corner, a couple of months away. But this guy's going to get a, a little tent made for him this year. I'm not going to let him out in the open like last year. And um, hopefully he'll keep a few more leaves on. So we've got some macadamia nuts and pots and um, I've got a good macadamia nut tree growing. There's, or a few basil, you know, basil for the garden and some um, parsley and things for the garden. I got some late tomatoes in. Eventually I was a bit slack with my veggies this year. Um, we've had a lot on their plate, so we've just been focusing on the fruit trees. This is the uh, Grimmel Jabba Takaba. It was sold to me as a Grimmel Jabba Takaba, so it's kind of questionable, as I do have another Grimmel and its leaves are probably twice the size. Um, but then I have heard there is an Auckland hybrid, so this this could be the Auckland hybrid. But that that's really bushed out. It's done really well. It's quite a big, big looking tree. It's um, it's gained a bit of height this year. It's probably gained or oh, twelve odd inches or thirty centimeters or something. That's what we really want with the Jabba Takabas, is we just want them to, you know, head, head for the moon uh, and just get nice and tall so they have a nice good trunk to grow lots of fruit on it. I do see a lot really bushy. Um, but yeah, really, you want them to be a nice tall tree, in my eyes. So the, over here, we, there's another Jabba Takaba. This is the Paulista Jabba Takaba. And that um, that's doing well. It's it's finally got some upright vegetative growth, which is cool because it had a lot of um, it was just vegging out and going bushy. But I really wanted some upright growth, so that's neat. The oak leaf papayas in the background there. That's oh, it's probably five times its size. That's a monster. Um, the amount of organic matter we're going to get from this and leaves and things. I mean, um, when that when that loses all its leaves, it's going to be epic. That's just going to will fall all on fall all on the ground and that's gonna be uh awesome for the trees nearby. And this is the Casimaroa or the um Luke White Sapote or custard apple. It's looking really healthy. The Luke custard apple does have a a spreading sort of uh form or shape supposedly. This is a grafted one. And it's it's sort of um, supposed to branch out, and whereas the other white spotes that I have, 
they all kind of grow upright like a bit like a pine tree where this guy he really wants to um spread out like a bloody octopus or something now just over here we'll just head past the old worm bin and uh, there's a heap of black taro and hidden in this black taro there is a cherry moya uh, now that's a rex cherry moya it's supposed to grow quite well in new zealand it's done pretty well oh here we go this is a nice angle it's grown it's grown that much it's pushed out that much probably on each branch from about there from about there so it's, it's doubled in size just this summer and it's even still growing right as we speak it's pushing out new growth it's nice too look no no bugs and love it love the cherry moya growth it looks it looks neat uh, and then you'll see behind the cherry moya there's a monstera deliciosa i think i said that right <clears throat> or a fruit salad plant in other words uh, and that's doing really well so now this is a quite a well protected corner um, it's quite close to the wall and that's why I chose to put the more vulnerable cherry moya in there but yeah here, here we go fingers crossed we get some fruit it actually had um, some flowers on it this season but I picked them off sacrilege I know but I really I just want the um, I want it to grow into a nice big tree before I start uh, putting the putting the old pressure on it for some fruit um this is the tamarillo so we ended up lopping off that branch that was sticking out here with all the fruit on it and uh, all those little suckers that i was talking about they um, squeeze through here they um all sprouted up and there they are it's like a it's like a nice um, vase shape it's still on the lean but it's uh, self-supporting itself and and I've just been picking off all the flowers throughout the season and I'm only just now letting it uh, fruit. I just really wanted it to uh, veg out and, and you know get nice and bushy. But if I stand back here, you'll see that screen that's just been made there that, of those three trees, the tamarillo, the custard apple and the oak leaf uh, uh, pawpaw. You know, that's, that's awesome. That's what you want. And... In your food forest that's creating a microclimate um, and it's helping protect the old little jubba to cover down there um, and then in amongst these sorts of things this is where you get your um, sweet apples uh, your yakons and um, down here this yellow guava it's been fruiting pretty hard it's got some nice flowers they look really neat it reminded me of kind of like a jubbo flower or something but they look pretty cool. We've got some fruit for me. This has a weird shape. This really wants to grow quite shrubby, so I'm not pruning it anymore. I'm just letting it do its thing, and it seems to just want to spread out like quite a short plant. Whereas I did initially try to prune it up a bit like a tree, like you would a fijoa or a pineapple guava, but no, the yellow guava uh, it seems to like the ground. So do what it will uh, over here we've got oh we've got some leaves covered in bird shit <laughs> if you look if you look up above us here we've got this massive uh, five finger tree that gets heaps of um what are they little silver eyes uh wax eyes in there and and they're just dropping manure on the ground constantly this is the french sugar that's really done well this year it's gotten quite big and we've actually got some fruit forming, which is cool. I haven't tried French sugar. Um, oh, to the left here we have the black um, bloody passion fruit. Yeah, that's done well. It had a bit of a bit of a problem there where it almost died off, and it lost all its fruit. It dropped all its fruit, but we brought it back to life. And um, it's just grown great guns, and now I, I keep it well watered. See, its its main vine is is right down here. Oh, I'll get out the light there. Its main vine is right next to this five finger, so I've really got to keep this area well uh, watered. I did give it a compost. I'm getting all these weeds come through, so you go figure. A eh? buy some store bought compost, and it's full of weeds. Um, yeah, we'll head over to the. Mountain 
pawpaw, another pawpaw. This is done good. It's grown, well, it's doubled in size, tripled in size, and we've we've got all these bloody pawpaws on there. Mountain pawpaws, they should be tasty. Keen to give those a whirl. I don't know what it's going to do in winter. This it hasn't gone through a winter. This plant, but um, yeah, it'll be up for a good test soon. Pomegranate, 86. That's grown, grown pretty big. It's really grown quite bushy. We've got some flowers forming. This is another kind of a shrubby kind of plant, a bit like the old pineapple guava. I thought it would grow up like a tree and it's just, just keeps falling over and seems to want to be a bush. Then we've got uh, ladyfinger bananas. Oh, they're massive. Look at that, that big sail. That's epic. Love it. Oh, the wind hasn't shredded it yet either. We've got another another big sail on this one. Gotta watch where I'm walking around here. Um, yeah, they're looking awesome. We've got baby bananas popping up as well. There's two two babies here. And then we've got two more just there. That's one just there. Another one. Right there, just popping up. So keep these well watered. We've got some rain coming, but rain due tomorrow. So I'm not irrigating or anything at the moment. I do like to use the old sprinkler, have a little sprinkler and water when it's dry. Uh, this is one of the low cots. Done quite well. It's probably tripled in size. And then over here, we've got another low cot. Which yes, yeah, just done well. Give these a couple of years. They're going to be massive. And that'll give us a nice uh, shade screen and you know, help create those microclimates. I go around and I pop in a bit of taro, this black taro around the place. Uh, oh, here we go. This is the ice cream bean that we, this is how the video ended last time. Uh, it's completely bushed out. We've got some primo new growth happening. These are all new growth. All these branches. I did see that this got sh uh, thrips, which I was a bit surprised by because I wouldn't have thought it would have got shrip thrips out here, you know, in the breeze and all the weather and that. Look, this branch, this whole thing's new from about from about there. So yeah, it's done bloody well. Ice cream bean, ice cream bean, or the inga bean. It's a the pod has a nice white sort of velvety uh, texture on the inside that holds the beans and you can get in there with a teaspoon or something like that and you can eat all, all of that um, pith, I guess you'd describe it as, and it's supposedly really sweet and tastes like ice cream. Yes, yeah, so that's grown tea nuts. We did have a, well, we've got a nice, uh, what the hell do you call it? Oh, cross the name's for, the name slipped me right now. Um, but it's dying back anyway, whatever it's called, which is a bit disappointing. But I decided, oh, well, because it's dying back, we'll, we planted this grapevine there. So this grape will head up there and we'll have a bunch of grapes in there. No, I've completely forgotten the name of that tree. Usually it's, it's quite a nice indoor plant. And yeah, it, post it in the comments if you can remember. It's just slipped my, slipped my mind. Um, here we've got another tamarillo. This is its first season in the ground. Fed only with geese poo. So it's doing pretty well actually. It's got nice leaves. You know, they're not, not deformed. Um, and this is an orange, orange variety. Where our last one was red, the other one over there is red. This is orange. So we'll have an orange and red tamarillos hopefully come spring next year. We never got this far last time, but we'll keep having a, a nosy on around. We've got a little dwarf um, peach tree, snow peaches or something. Uh, we've got grapefruit, grapefruit tree, it's a little guy. It'll be massive though. Then we've got a, another ice cream bean over here. Now this is in a real exposed location, and it's doing pretty well. It looks like... That whole branch there, from where my finger is, that is uh, all this year's growth. Same with 
Yeah, same with that branch. That whole branch there. That's all this year's growth. So yeah, we're, we're growing branches. You see branches, they're not likely to fall off in the winter. Well, sometimes they will, but most of the time it's just your leaves that will defoliate. If you're growing branches, you know, your tree's getting bigger. That's what you want. That's doubled in size since last year. That went through the winter though. Just a little stick like that, handled it. This is uh, oh, a candy fig. Yeah, it's pretty epic. Um, this is the first year that we've actually had you know, heaps of figs. It's got it's got lots of figs. It's, I don't know, probably got 50, 50 figs or 30 figs or something. I'm keen to try the candy variety. We haven't tried that. I bought this one as quite a big tree. You got it on a bit of a deal. A lot more deals. Yeah, well, there's, there's actually a lot more I could show you. Um, I've probably only shown you a quarter of the fruit trees, but we are we're on the uh, subject of subtropicals. So I'll leave it at that, and I might make another video soon. All right, guys, all the best. A little peep. <sighs> See you later.